Good morning. Hey guys, I'm just getting everything all set up for you. That way we've got the chat box up. I've got everything ready to go for our very first webinar. It's very exciting. Good morning to those who are joining. I'm gonna get y'all set up, share the screen with the presentation. My video is on and my audio is on and you guys are on mute as it should be <laughs> on the webinar. That way everybody's not hearing everything that everyone has to say. Um, as people are joining, you can minimize the chat, um, I mean the video window. And oh, look at everybody jumping on. Yay, so happy to have you. The first time I've done a webinar, so hopefully it'll all go as planned, but you never know, right? That's what makes it entertaining and exciting. Um, I'm not gonna have the video on the whole time of me. Um, so you do have the chat. I've got my chat window open. So if you guys want to ask questions, um, if you're watching on your phone, what you would do is click on the participants on the bottom and then click on chat and that'll open up the chat box. So you can say anything you want on and in there. Um, make sure you're muted and your videos off that way I don't hear you. Zoom is a great tool. Everybody uses it right, but it's free. So we're trying out something this time to see how well it works and um, what works with it. I will provide the recording and the slides afterwards. So if you miss something or you're listening in the background, if you're a photographer editing or you're doing other things, that's okay too. I will send it over. The goal is to stay on track for the hour maximum. I know your time is worth a lot. Um, so I appreciate you signing in and coming. Um, to join us, you're going to want to minimize the participant window if you're on a computer. If you are on your phone, you can really only see me, so that's okay. Um, if you lose the connection for whatever reason, just click on the link, join in again. It happens. We practiced a little bit this morning with someone and um, they got lost for a minute, but just click it and join right back in the conversation where everything is going. So um, again, use the chat box if you have any kinds of questions. Thanks, Bumby, for the little note. Um, I'm excited to do this. I'm used to speaking in front of a room full of people rather than speaking to myself. So chat away if you've got feedback and uh, let me know how it's going. Um, for all the good stuff. Again, I'll provide the recording and the slides for anybody who's jumping in a little bit after. Um, you'll get everything to watch it later. I'll email out, um, I'll record, record the whole thing and email it out to you so you've got it. So I'm really excited to have you guys join today for my first webinar. Um, it is something I've been wanting to do for a long time and I just haven't really had the chance to do it. So, um, you know, something fun, something different, something exciting. And, um, you know, we'll give everybody a few minutes to join on. If you have any questions you wanna make sure I cover, now's a great time to pop into that chat box and um, pop them in there. Lots of great content, about 30 slides full of great info for you to get more venue referrals and the right way to go about it rather than the wrong way. But uh, I want to make sure I cover everything that you were expecting to learn today. So if you can think of anything, put it into the chat box and we'll get excited. I am definitely working from my room. This is my life. So I work from home. Um, so... You know, you get to see the real me versus the me you see out networking or on event day. So thanks. Welcome. Welcome to my space. Uh, you know, with a lot of us work from home. I'd be more blessed to have an office, but we're not there just yet. So um, welcome to it. And we're really excited to get started. Okay, I'm not going to waste too much time. I'm going to get going. Give everybody a minute. Um, but as anybody joins in, they are welcome to... Um, ask questions in the chat box and I am going to pop my video off so that you're really only seeing the slides. So let's focus on today's presentation. Okay, so today we're focusing on top tips to earn venue referrals. What does that actually mean? Um, and what are you going to learn today? Lots of great information. So webinar today is presented by me, Shannon Tarrant. Um, this topic really came about as an idea for a webinar because I spoke last month in January at a great conference up in Atlanta called the Planner Suite. And I know one or two of the planners from the suite are on today. So welcome, excited to have you. Um, 
but they had asked me to host a round table about how to get venue referrals and wasn't really sure where to go with the conversation. And as we were sitting there chatting, the planners at my table were really excited and got a lot out of it and said, you should really teach this as a full seminar rather than a round table. So I thought, oh, why not do it on a webinar? Um, so my history, why the planner suite asked me to come speak is that, you know, my background is in working in catering, which required me to work at venues all over the place, as well as working at both Cypress Grove and um, the, and, and out at Mission Inn, for those of you who know that I was out there. So, um, from that project really came, you know, I went out on my own and started doing consulting with the Shannon experience. And so what that is, is I work with vendors almost exclusively in the wedding industry, finding ways to help them grow their business, sales, marketing, tips, things like that. And I do a lot of individual business consulting, which is really one of my greatest passions of helping people grow and make more money in their business. And from that and the networking and the consulting, I met this great man named Derek Burge and he owns the wedding venue map. And we decided to partner together to take the printed map for those who haven't seen it. It's a pretty cool um, thing and it's distributed all over central Florida. Um, but for those, um, and so the map itself is a great piece, but we're going to take the map online. So that's kind of my background that makes me um, hopefully knowledgeable enough to be teaching you today. So this is what you're going to learn today. You're going to learn uh, the value of a vendor and venue referral, how to find the right referral partners, not just anyone, why persistence pays off, tips to earn the referral, what exactly is a strategic partnership, how to get the meeting, and what to do at the meeting once you actually get there. So let's talk a little bit about why referrals. Um, referrals should be a really important part of your marketing plan each year. Um, venues, which is why this conversation came about, <laughs> are at the top of the list, right? Most brides and grooms in Central Florida, when they are picking a place to get married, you know, maybe 20% hire a planner first, but most of the time, the first thing they book and decide on is the venue itself. So as a referral partner, they tend to get first access at brides and grooms, which is why most of the time, um, vendors from every category find the venue to be one of the most important referrals. So it should be an important part of your marketing plan each year when you're figuring it out. So why, why is it that important? Well, venue referrals tend to be more qualified. The venue that refers you is qualifying the lead before they give them your name. Um, I used to ask at Mission Inn, what's your budget? What's the style of what you're looking for? I'm not going to send a bride who's looking for rustic um, to a florist who does crazy, over-the-top, modern, styled things. Um, I'm not going to send a bride with a $5,000, you know, photography budget to the, one of our more budget photographers because a lot of times she's going to see their price point and it's not going to be where she wants it to be. So, you know, as a venue doing referrals, we tend to qualify the referrals because we want to make sure we're sending the right people over. The time saved from a referral. The follow-up process is usually a lot easier and brides and grooms make the decision quicker when the lead is a referral. Um, so that way you've got the opportunity to be able to, um, you know, get an answer faster. The venue a lot of times will tell you, oh, they've already picked a photographer. So you can kind of go around the bride and groom to figure it out, or they've already picked a different planner. Um, the conversion rates are much higher. So a lead that comes from a referral, these are stats from online, um, is from entrepreneur.com, but referrals have an almost triple the conversion rate over Google and internet leads. And a lot of times it's because that person is qualifying them, is making sure that it saves your time and all of those things. So these are just three quick reasons why it's really important for it to be a part of your marketing plan to be going after venues as a referral. So this is a great quote I found online, people influence people. Nothing influences people more than a recommendation from a trusted source. A trusted referral is the holy grail of advertising. From Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. He knows one or two things about marketing, don't you think? So, you know, what really stood out from this quote is that it's true for everything. I don't eat at a restaurant, almost never, that somebody I know at hasn't eaten there and told me it's amazing. I'm a pretty snobby foodie. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be delicious and unique and fun. Um, but 
you know, it's about that recommendation. This weekend I tried this great place called Mom's in Winter Garden and it's like a grilled cheese restaurant. But a family, a friend of the family had eaten there and said, oh, you need to check this place out. So um, I didn't even look it up. I, we just found out where it was and drove there and went in to eat. So, um, you know, referrals in general is the biggest influencer when it comes to a purchase in today's environment, especially with millennials, which is about 90%, I'm going to guess, of your clientele. Um, so that makes it really important. So how to find the right referral partners. So let's talk a little bit about this. You know, first and foremost, you need to pick the venues that fit your ideal client and your style. If you're a high-end luxury vendor, you shouldn't be becoming referral partners, you know, with a local civic center. Um, it's not exact. It's not going to be the same bride most of the time. If your style is elegant and modern and chic, going after a barn doesn't make any sense. So you need to pick the venues that really fit your ideal client and your style. You should do your homework about the property and the person you're going to meet with. So the internet's a great thing, right? You can more or less Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest stalk anybody that's out there um, of finding out about them. What do they like? What's their personality? Do they have a family? Um, a lot of the times if you friend request people on Facebook, even if you don't know them, they know someone who you're friends with and will accept the friend request if they're in the industry. Um, but make sure you do your homework. Find out who you're going to meet with. Also, make sure you know the property. Don't show up blind, right? Like make sure you're looking and finding out as much as you can about them before you get there. And create partnerships with people that you like. Don't just find the perfect property. If that person and you don't connect, and you have no potential to connect with them, the chances of them referring you are still going to be slim, even if you get the meeting and do all the right things. So make sure you're finding people that you really like to work with. You have to remember that when it comes to meeting with a venue, you're the salesperson and the venue is the prospect. I'm not sure most of us look at it that way. Well, not based upon a lot of the vendor meetings I would do. So the same behaviors that you would use when you're selling to a potential bride and groom, you need to use when trying to win the heart of the new venue. So, you know, what's your process? It's like going into an interview, you know, do your research, know the property, know the person, know what's their style. Why should they want to use you if they don't know you? So just remembering, putting yourself in the same mindset when you're going to meet a venue um, is really important. So here's a few quick don'ts and make sure you do. Don't pop in and expect a meeting. Um, I don't know about most categories of vendors, but I know that as a venue, brides and grooms show up all the time. I mean, I'm imagining most of the time they don't just show up at a wedding planner's office or at maybe cake. I'll give you cake because it's a bakery. But don't, don't, it, nothing's worse than my whole day is planned and a bride pops in. Well, guess what? A bride and groom are potentially money. So I'll stop everything I'm doing to go do the tour and go meet and talk with them. But for a vendor, it tends to be more of an irritation. Popping in to drop off something, if it's somebody you already have a sustained relationship with, is a different ballgame. But popping in and expecting them to meet with you and give up their time without a plan, um, some people are great with that. Venue salespeople aren't usually the most creative. Creatives tend to be okay with the fly by the seat of your pants and change it all the time, but not so much when it comes to um, venue sales and catering managers. Don't send an email asking how to get on the list. I can't tell you how many times I got that email and how many times it would say, hey, just wondering, you know, what I have to do to get on your vendor list. Um, so don't do that. That's a terrible idea. And you'll go to the least of they'll never refer you for doing things like that. The last really big don't is don't offer money for referrals. Even if you offer me a ton of cash, it still doesn't mean, I mean, some venues that may work, but for it's probably a slim amount. So therefore you'll end up potentially ruining the relationship before you get the chance to have it. So make sure you, make sure you're respectful of their time. If you plan an hour to come out, if it hits an hour, let them know, listen, I understand we're having a great conversation and I'm happy to stay, but it's only been, a, it's been the hour that we allotted and I want to make sure I'm not taking up too much of your time. Get to know them as an actual person. You know, by doing some of that pre-research pre before you meet with them, it makes a big difference in the conversation and how the conversation can go. It, again, remember you're selling yourself to them. So you're bonding and connecting with them 
if I don't have kids and, but I have cats and you have cats, we can bond over shared cats, showing pictures, sharing pictures. So make sure you get to know them as a person, not just as the venue. And then don't give up. So this one says my patented blow up blow off move. So when I worked at Mission and every time a new vendor who I had never heard of reached out to me and said, hey, can we schedule a time to me? I'd love to chat with you more about what I do and whatever. My standard move for every single person was to blow them off once. I would say, listen, this month is really busy. Can you follow up with me next month and I'll make sure we get something on the calendar or three weeks from now or whatever window of time. 95% of vendors never followed up. So if you're the one who follows up and says, you know, actually makes the effort when they've said reach back out to me, we're all busy, right? And what's your season may not be their season. And remember, like December may be slow for you for weddings, but that venue catering manager could also handle Christmas parties, holiday parties, you know, all of those types of things. So remember to don't give up. Make sure you invest the time. I mean, you don't want to be crazy calling every day, but if the person, you know, doesn't respond, think of a different way to reach out to them. So let's talk a little bit about what is an actual strategic partnership. When two companies come together and create a synergy that increases both companies' profit potential. So the most important word in that sentence is both companies. It really has to benefit for both. So remember, it's not a strategic partnership if you are reaping most of the benefits. How can you help them? So you know, when you work for a venue, it's, it's a struggle sometimes because oftentimes you're referring and referring and referring. And the, on the rare occasion, when you ask for something in return, it gets a, oh, we're too busy. Oh, we don't have time or kind of crickets on the other side. So the best approach is really to start from the, how can you help them? And there's two amazing photographers in central Florida who, have built an entire business around this. I mean, they really, for each person they meet with, it's what can I do to help you? What can I do to help you grow your business? You know, what do you need help with? Do you need headshots? Do you need venue property shots? You know, do you have a Christmas party that I can sponsor? So keep in mind that it's, it's not strategic for both parties if both people don't benefit. So let's talk about a little bit about standing out during events. This is a really great way for you to have an opportunity to meet with a venue person for somebody you've never met or don't really know very well. So first, um, before the event. These are the kinds of behaviors and things that you can do leading up to an event that puts you in a better light and really has the opportunity to set you apart. Confirm the timeline. Ask about arrival times, load-in instructions, and parking. You know, know which venue you have to unload the truck and move it as quickly as possible because the next person's coming in behind you and there's really only one spot for load-in. So ask those questions in advance, not on event day. Get the name and contact number of the manager and captain on the event so that you know if you show up, that person's probably not in their office. And the phone number you might have for them is, you know, just the office phone number. Um, ask if they have a vendor dress code. Please ask this. So, you know, if you're working at the Ritz Carlton, it may be a different requirement than what you're wearing when you work at the Winter Park Farmers Market. As a company standard, you get to represent your brand however you choose to. But some venues, it's really important. When we worked at Mission Inn, vendors who showed up to work the actual wedding in jeans, it was a really big problem for the owner. So if he would see that, he would say we shouldn't refer that vendor. So keep in mind that it's really easy to just ask the question. Like just ask it, what's the vendor dress code? Give your contact information and that of anyone on your team working the wedding. So when it comes to rental companies and things like that, I wanna know who's my point person on that day because I'm sure the salesperson I'm placing an order with isn't that person that I call on event day if there's a problem. I mean, maybe they'll answer and that's great and well appreciated, but make sure that, you know, the right people have the right people's information, including your cell phone, your email, whatever. So these are all really easy things you can do before the event to set yourself up for success to try to get the referral later. So on event day, introduce yourself to the staff and jot down their names. Make sure you jot down their names. Know who the captain was, the bartender was, who the catering manager was, who are, you know, who are the people, a few of the servers. I mean, you never know who, who could be a decision maker or help, help you in that process of gaining the referral. Be flexible and demonstrate you're a team 
player. So there was this wedding once when I worked for Big City that we were up at the Lake Mary Event Center. And there was this wonderful florist. And um, we were both late. We were late because our truck broke down. They had another setup that day that was um, a little bit behind. And so when we got there, it became a game of what's the most important for thing, thing for us to get done first. So we really worked together as a team. You know, our kitchen staff was filling water bases while they were helping us set silverware. And we were running back and forth. But working together as a team, I will refer that florist for the rest of my days because their staff are team players. So be flexible and demonstrate you're a team player. Obviously do what you're there to do. Do your job first. But if you don't have another setup or if you're a DJ and you're all set and everything's ready to go and there's another hour, what does it hurt to say, is there anything I can do to help you? It doesn't mean they're going to say yes, but being a team player on wedding day, you know, all the vendors have to come together and work together for the wedding to be a, a true success. So make sure you act like a team player. Thank them at the end and use their names. That's why you jot them down in the beginning. So you can, you know who you're talking to and be thankful. Um, on event day, take pictures and post on social media. Tag the venue and all vendors, not just the venue. But that's a great way for you to build that vendor love, you know, throughout the event day. And then remember you're a guest in their house and act accordingly. Um, you know, the venue, it's their home. They're there every day. You're the visitor there. So don't make demands. Don't, you know, ask, be gracious. And, um, just remember that you're the guest after the event, send a note thanking them and compliment them on a job well done. I mean, if it's the first time you've worked at a venue, you know, that's that thing, whether it's an email or a handwritten note, whatever you need to do, but do something to, um, you know, say thank you. Write them reviews online. So, I mean, I just learned this tip. I can't believe I didn't know it. So thanks, Karen, for mission in for teaching me this one. But um, she writes vendors reviews after working with them on Google, Facebook, the Not Wedding Wire. I, like, mind blown. How, how have I not thought of that before now? So um, write them the reviews. The reviews. Who doesn't love getting a great review? I know I get excited when I see them pop up. So, and I watch my clients, you know, my consulting clients get really excited with new reviews. So write them a review. Blog the wedding. Okay, we don't all blog. I get it. But if you do blog the wedding or if you post it on social media again, link it, share it, give them the links. Um, but blog the wedding and make sure you mention the staff. Don't just post about the wedding. Mention how great the staff were to work with. It becomes a, a blog can be a sales tool, not just posting about the real wedding. Um, send an email to their boss highlighting the staff. If that person really was a rock star that day, I mean, the boss probably doesn't get to decide who the referral is, but the catering manager does. And even back to the days of working at Bahama Breeze, waiting tables, it was so great to get recognized by name someone versus it just being in the um in the email or in the survey so just remember that after the event these are different steps before during after with the whole point in gaining the referral um in the long run vendors that are easy and fun to work with will get referred time and time again i know this by experience those are the types of people i refer to the venue make it easy for me make event day fun don't make it difficult and challenging and those are the type of people that scoot their way onto vendor lists a lot quicker than others. Um, next up, we're going to really talk about ways to get the meeting with the venue coordinator. So let's say that you haven't had the opportunity to work a wedding there, but for some you may have. So first and foremost, start with the list of venues you've already worked at and you've had a chance to shine. If you've done those things we just talked about, there's no way that the venue coordinator isn't going to meet with you. But don't forget to be persistent because they may be busy right now, but that doesn't mean that they don't want to work with you in the future um, or meet with you later. Uh, the next tip is to attend a networking event to meet the venue contacts in person. I mean, one of the best things about attending some of these luncheons like Perfect Wedding Guide is they send out the list of who's going. So you can look in advance and see if you've been trying to get on the list with Four Seasons and you know the Four Seasons team is going to the luncheon, heck yeah, go and try to figure out who they are and meet with them and make that face-to-face -face connection at a networking event. Um, pick up the phone and actually call them instead of emailing. This goes really far. I mean, I know we all live in the email dump and sometimes email is 
faster. And I understand that. But on the phone, you get the opportunity to make an actual connection with the person instead of just an email where there's only so much personality. I mean, you got to work hard to write an email where personality comes across. So it's, you know, a good option for to have that opportunity to be able to speak to the person on the phone and really shine. Next up is ask one of your current vendor partners for an introduction and the referral. So if you know someone who already works at that venue, ask. Um, you know, take a look at the social media and go check the tags and see who's already working there if you have a specific one in mind. Send a handwritten note con to congratulate them on being featured on a blog, like if you see they've been featured, or, you know, if they've got an award for something, best of weddings, or they won best of the not. Um, you know, I used to go through Celebrations Magazine when it was out and <laughs> handwrite a note to every single vendor, hey, you got published. You know, congratulations on getting published in Celebrations Magazine. Well, these vendors would write back and say, I didn't even know I was published sometimes. So, you know, make sure that you think outside the box. Um, give a bonus offer for leads at venues you want to get the, your foot in the door. So let's say you've been dying to shoot a wedding at the Lake Mary Event Center. I know, let's just pick a venue. And you've never had the opportunity to shoot there, but you get a lead, right? So a bride or groom fills out the form and says, hey, we're getting married at Lake Mary Event Center and I want to know, you know, what your pricing is. A, your lead form on your website would have to make sure that it says what venue are you getting married at or is your event being held at. So if it doesn't, put that on your to-do list for today. Um, but B, make, you know, give them a little something extra. If you know that showcasing your work um, at that venue and being able to share pictures of it and things like that is whether you're a florist or a rental company or whatever, you know, give them a little bonus of something to get your foot in the door with that venue because afterwards you can do all now you can do all of the before the event during the event after the event things that we just talked about but you have to have an event there to be able to do it so maybe give them a little something if you're a photographer throw in an extra hour if you're a florist maybe you do sweetheart table flowers um you know if you do calligraphy and they're doing the invitation, maybe you make them a little sign or something small. I'm not saying you have to give them a discount. I don't, I try very hard to not believe in discounts. Sometimes you have to do it, but, um, but give them a little bonus, give them a little something extra that, uh, will help you get your foot in the door at that venue. So all of these things are different tips to get the meeting with the venue coordinator, but now you get the meeting. So now what's up, right? Now what do you have to do when you get there and when you're in the meeting? So first step, bring your A game, please. Remember, this is an interview. So how would you act if it was a job interview and you're trying to win the job? You'd arrive on time. Ideally, that means being five minutes early. Don't show 30 minutes early, though. Nothing makes me crazier because I'm planning my day. About five minutes early. If you get there 20 minutes early, that's fine. But sit in your car and wait. Check your email, do some Instagramming, um, and then come inside at about that five minute mark. Be prepared. So, what do you need to do to showcase your stuff? You know, um, but be ready for the fact that this is an interview. Put your phone on silent or leave it in the car, you know, whatever those things are. Come dressed to impress. I don't care how casual you are. I mean, on work from home days when I'm not doing a webinar, sometimes this is workout pants and a sweatshirt. But when I'm, if I'm going to meet with a client or a potential referral partner, which is more important actually than meeting with a potential bride, because they can send you 10 times the business, 100 times the business of an actual bride and groom. So come dressed to impress. Um, you know, what do you wear on event day? Wear that. I mean, at least it shows, um, you know, gives them a great example of what that looks like. Bring a small gift. I'm not talking about something that costs money, but if you've done the Facebook stalking and you've done your research and your homework, um, bring something. You know, are they obsessed with their dog? Go to the little local dog bakery and get a little dog treat for $2. You know, just something that is a little small something. I have seen notepads with a picture of the venue on it. Um, 
I'm trying to think of some of the things people have brought me. Um, if you know the person's obsessed with Starbucks, you know, uh, a little, a cute coffee mug with a fun saying on it, but bring a small gift. Again, if you don't have the budget for it, that's fine. It's not life ending, but these are just my tips of things that I've seen that like really set people apart. Find a way to showcase your work. So bring an iPad as a part of your being prepared. Have your work showcased, you know, have a gallery of images prepared and ready to go. Bring what your packages are. Bring what you give a bride and groom in a meeting. But find a way to showcase your work in front of them for that meeting. This is your one shot. And I'll, I can't tell you how many people show up, would show up unprepared. They show up with nothing. I mean, if you're a limo company and you want me to refer you limousines, I mean, drive a limo and put me in it and drive me around property and show me why it's the best limo in town. I don't know, think outside the box, but bring your A game when you're going to meet with someone. Ask a lot of really good questions. Again, this should be like selling, it's the 80-20 rule. You only talk 20% of the time and they talk 80% of the time. What's the biggest opportunity happening for your menu right now? What's your biggest challenge? How do you refer couples to vendors? This one's really important because you want to know how they do it. Is it just the list that they print and put in a packet when somebody does a tour? Do they find out more information and do individual um, referrals based upon personality, budget, things like that? Do they have a room full of business cards and things to decorate that you can do canvases and all of that stuff? But we didn't have that admission in. So somebody would give me another book and it's like, guys, I don't have any place to put all the books. Like I'm not going to drop what? books all over the property um, so find out really how do they refer their couples what's your perfect client so I can refer business back this is that whole giving to get right like who is the right bride if you work wedding shows um, I'm sure at some point you know someone getting married Previous brides and grooms say, hey, I have a friend getting married, and they call you first. They don't even have the venue yet. But find out who their right client is, what's the price point at the venue, you know, find out all that information. When you know what their biggest challenges are, maybe you can help them fulfill it. Maybe you are a rock star at Instagram, and you can teach them some things. So make sure you ask the right questions, because it will help position you better. It's not just about seeing the venue. Um, and learning about the venue. It's asking the questions about where's the venue going in their business also. Some other ways you can help is some different marketing tips. Ask if they need any marketing materials from you. Um, but ask if they need them before you just give them. There's a wonderful officiant in town who doesn't do many weddings anymore, but he used to mail business cards to the venues, like 10 a month. They were just white business cards. They had his name, had his contact information. And every month we would get an envelope that had 10 business cards, no card, no nothing. And we just threw them away. We did actually refer this person, but I don't need 10 a month because in this day and age, we weren't giving out as many business cards. We were just emailing the contact info. So don't send things or give things if they don't need them. Um, if you have images of a wedding, maybe they want images of that wedding that you've already done at that property, but ask them if they need marketing materials um, before you just send them over to them. Plan an inspiration shoot to showcase your work. So for a venue that you've never worked at, my best tip and the way I used to audition vendors when I worked at Mission Inn was to let them plan an inspiration shoot. Get together with a group of vendors as long as they were all licensed and insured and, you know, pitch me a shoe. Get me a Pinterest board. What does it look like? What's the style? Because I wanted to make sure it fit the venue um, that I was working at. But plan an inspiration shoot to showcase your work. But here's the caveat to that. You have to treat the inspiration shoot like it's a wedding. Right? If you're a planner, you need that timeline to be at the venue well in advance, along with floor plans and what the plan is of the day. If you're the photographer, you need to show up dressed like you're shooting a wedding. Don't show up in flip-flops and jean shorts and a t-shirt just because it's a shoe. At the end of the day, this is an audition for every single vendor who's there that day, even the ones who are already being referred by the venue. So make sure if you're going to do a shoot and you're going to use that as your foot in the door of the venue, Let's say you're not the planner who's coordinated the shoot and not the photographer who's been talking to if you're the florist. Hey, bring an extra little floral arrangement out for them to put on their desk. So use it for marketing. Um, offer to write a guest blog for them and 
for them on their own website, right? Giving tips and tricks. If you're a cake company, like what styles of cakes are cool and trendy right now? So right, nobody likes to write blogs. No one, including me. I mean, it's fun when they're done and they're up there and they look good, but making the time to write a blog is exhausting for everyone. I mean, other than Mark Kingsdorf, who owns the wedding ghost. So if you need a blogger, he can blog for you. But other than that, nobody's really loving blogging. So if you offer to write a guest blog and send them up, maybe it's a blog you already have on your website. So maybe you're sharing content you've already written, so you don't have to write anything. But heck yeah, if they post it and showcase your work on the blog. The other thing to do is blog about the venue. You know, do a little interview while you're there. Do you mind if I write a blog about you and things like that? So that gives you, it's different ways that you're helping to market the venue um, all the way around. Oh, back to the inspiration shoot. So here's a big thing that most vendors, when they come in to do an inspiration shoot at a venue, forget to do. They forget to ask the venue what shots do they need. So here's a great example. I did a shoot with Claire Paselli years ago at this point, um, who's now that first moment. So what Claire was great about is saying, okay, here's our plan, Shannon, what do you need? And I was like, well, I kind of need pictures of brides and grooms doing the activities here at Mission Inn. So we had them playing pool. We had them upstairs in the restaurant eating pizza. Like we did for late night snacks. We did all these different things. We put them in a hotel bed in their dress and their tux. Like they were going to bed at night. So it was definitely worth the time for me to do the whole shoot because I got some whopper shots for my own marketing stuff. But now that I have a bride and groom there in, you know, in full wedding regalia that I could use. So make sure you ask the venue, what shots do they need? What places on property do they wish you would shoot at? Our waterfall was great at Mission Inn, but how many pictures do I need a bride and groom at a waterfall? So, you know, make sure you communicate with them and ask what they need from the shoot. Some more ideas. So offer something special. Um, throw in a little gift for couples from that venue as a thank you for the referral. I know a photo booth company who does an extra hour of photo booth. Um, as a photographer, maybe you get a hundred thank you cards um, for, you know, because of the referral from the venue. So think about something that's a great value add, doesn't cost you a ton of money in terms of cost. But so if the venue is going to refer you, because that's something you should talk about in the meeting. Well, if you guys are willing to refer us clients, this is what that looks like. Um, you know, this is what we were willing to give them. Um, never speak poorly of other vendors in your category. Here's a terrible but true example. So I met with a DJ who came out to Mission Inn. It was a new DJ company who wanted to meet and talk about um, the potential of working together on different projects. And when they came out, they spent about 15 minutes, literally 15 minutes of the meeting, talking really poorly about vendors that Mission Inn had had years of relationships with. I mean, years. Like there are people who had been on the vendor list for more than 10, 15 years. So immediately it shut me down, right? I stopped I really stopped listening because if you're the kind of vendor who's going to speak poorly about other people, it, you know, we should all be lifting each other up. We shouldn't be knocking each other down. So if you're going to talk poorly about other people in your category, in your competition, I mean, it just makes you look bad. So remember when you're there to focus on you, um, not on other people. Another tip is to take notes. You don't want to forget about the important points. So whether you write it down or put it in your phone or whatever, I'd rather have you say, hey, do you mind if I write this down? Then forget what we talked about. All things being equal, people will do business and refer business to people they know and trust and like. So when you're there, the whole point in that meeting is for you guys to really get to know each other, finding out how do they pick the vendors they refer, what you can do to help them. It really isn't about just sitting and saying, oh my God, can you put me on your list? The amount of times in my career that I've been asked that question on a phone call with a stranger I never met over an email that... I didn't know the person either. And then I went and clicked on their website and it was terrible. They didn't even showcase their work well. P.S. Your website is your storefront. So if you email me from Q at amawedingplanner.com and I don't know you, I'm going to go to amawedingplanner.com and then I'm going to go to amawedingplanner on Instagram and amawedingplanner on Facebook and I'm going to look at what you're doing and putting out there is what you showcase. So um, remember those things. But that's for me to even decide if I want to take the meeting. 
So keep in mind that they've got to know you and trust you and like you to build up that relationship and finding out what you can do to work together more in the future. So let's talk about the taboo conversation to pay or not to pay. You really have to know your local market. Um, unfortunately for caterers, everywhere in the country for a caterer to be on the list of a venue whether it's an exclusive list or a limited list or you know the exclusive caterer at a venue they're usually paying a percentage back to the venue um, it's how it's set up whether the caterers like it or not it's pretty standard everywhere in the country um, but in the central florida market kickbacks aren't superly popular so in meaning for me to send you a refer you as a DJ, I'm not expecting 10% back from um, you to put you on my referral list. But that's not the same thing in South Florida. I know a few vendors who have moved from Central Florida to South Florida on the East Coast, you know, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, whatever, and it is very pay to play when it comes to venues. It is not about networking and building relationships and making friends. It's about how much you're going to pay me. So you really need to know your market to know if that's standard or not. Um, find ways to give back in other ways. You know, do in-kind donations. Um, what's their favorite charity? Uh, Mission Inn hosts a huge charity event every year called um, Junior Golf. And the property itself, the resort, supports Lake County you know, children golfers each summer to come out and learn how to golf for free. So the staff at Mission Inn puts on this humongous fundraiser. Well, why don't you donate the centerpieces or the linens or do they need audio visual or can you be the musician at the cocktail hour? You know, find out what other ways you can give back that isn't a cash referral kickback. For some people, that's great, and they love it, and they're happy to take it. But in general, in our market here in Central Florida, it's kind of taboo to offer that and to put it out there before you really know. I mean, the venue who expects it, they'll tell you. So that's why it's really important in that meeting to ask, how do you decide who you're going to refer and when you're going to refer them? Make sure after the meeting's all said and done to say thank you. Um, one of the first things I learned very early in my career in catering, and thank you, Molly, who's not on this, but she'll always get credit for it, is she taught me to be your word. If you say you're going to do something, do it. If you say you're going to email them over the, the pictures for a wedding, make sure you block the time in your calendar after this meeting and you get back to your office to within 24 hours do what you say you're going to do. If you say you're going to put on a shoot, great. Email them with a follow-up that says, this is what I'm going to work on based upon our meeting and find out what are good dates and times for us to do it and sum it all up. But be your word. If you say you're going to do something, make sure that you do it. And, you know, we all, things happen, right? So if I say I'm going to get you information tomorrow and tomorrow comes and 7,000 other things have blown up in my face, I at least send you an email saying, I'm so sorry. I didn't get that proposal, contract, et cetera, done, but I promise you'll have it first thing tomorrow. And then I make sure they get it first thing tomorrow. Stuff's going to happen, but you have to keep the communication open. Send a small token of appreciation. Remember, this is like an interview, a handwritten note, a little surprise, you know, whatever. It's not always about how much money it's going to cost. It's about you thinking outside the box of something that, you know, really meant that you were listening in the conversation. Be different, be unique, and stand out. So what does that look like? I mean, there's all kinds of cute little gifts of things that you can find to that's going to maybe sit on their desk or um, something that's useful for them to use. But just that little token of appreciation can go really far. So where do you start? Right now, I've given you all the tips and all the tools and, you know, how to get the meeting, what to say when you get the meeting, how to act on event day. But where are you supposed to start with this whole big shebang of things? So make a list of venues that you've already worked at and you know the contact person. Remember, it should be people that you like, that you like working with, they enjoyed working with you, um, and really start there. It's very easy to realize or forget or not know if you're actually on their list. If the list isn't published anywhere, like on their website, how do you even know? Um, one of my clients runs two different businesses and they all of a sudden realized that for one business they were on the list, but the other business they weren't. And it was just an easy forget. They were like, oh yeah, we should have you on for both. But um, she didn't realize she wasn't on for both. So make sure you're touching base with A, the people who already do refer you, because you don't want to forget about those ones, but of the places that you've actually worked. 
use that beautiful wedding venue map that I've got rolling around and is distributed all over Central Florida at shows and bridal salons, at jewelry stores, different vendors, and actually research the venues near you. Not that you mind going to work anywhere, but wouldn't it be great if every venue was 25 to 30 minutes from your front door? So look at the ones around you and see if they're the right fit for your brand. Again, make sure you're doing the research. If it's not rustic, don't look at, and you're not rustic, you know, make sure it matches what your brand and who your client is. And then really focus this year on picking three. I know it sounds ridiculous. The map has 350 on it. But could you imagine if you could get three venues in Central Florida to build a powerful, strong, strategic relationship with? So, like, really are going to refer you. Um, you know, one of the biggest complaints I hear from vendors in general is that you spend all this time and all this energy to build a relationship with someone and then they leave. Hotels are the worst, right? People bop back and forth all over the place around different hotels. So, um, but maybe they go to a different hotel and you just drag the referral over there because they already love you and now you have the opportunity to shine with the new people. So, you know, really finding three places that truly believe in you, your product, what you give, how you take care of your clients, and building powerful strategic relationships with them um, and everyone on their staff. That's why the whole staff is important, right? It's not just that one person. If you know the captains who work the weddings, if you know, I mean, those of you who have worked at Mission Inn enough times, God, Carol's been there for like 100 years. Who knows Carol? Shout out in the chat if you know Carol. So, um, you know, when I first started there, I was like, Carol, who's your favorite person to work with? Right. Cause I want to know who our staff likes. So make sure that, you know, it's not just a relationship with the catering manager. It's with the venue in general, get to know them, the people there, the staff, the servers, the bartenders, you want everybody shouting your name from the rooftops. So making sure that like, you know, you're focusing on three, there's more than enough business to go around. Right. I mean, we know, we all know. So if a venue does a hundred weddings and even if they're referring four DJs, if they adamantly refer those four, I mean, heck, maybe that's 25 more events you get this year from that one referral. Um, remember it's not free. So that's why when we started this whole game, we were talking about it being a part of your marketing budget. Um, I'm not talking about it spending a fortune and it's not the same cost of, you know, advertising in a magazine, but it takes time. Time is money. We all know that. I know that every minute of every day, <laughs> but, and I appreciate you spending your time here with me today, but it takes time and memorable touches. So think outside the box, do different things. Building a relationship isn't the easiest thing to do. Um, because it, it does you do it's an investment it's an investment in time and touches maybe you see a great article online of something that you were just talking about with the venue manager and you send it over you can't forget the people who do already refer you also you can't just let them go because if you're not still touching and and you know giving them your effort as well it can be a, you, it can be affected and it can affect your business Huge tip. Don't forget the other vendors. Sometimes I felt like people would chase the venues nonstop, but you know, it, it, there's definitely a specific order. Not, it's not always exactly the same, but there's an order that people, um, go in when it comes to booking their venue. So if you're somebody who's on the bottom of the list, don't just chase the venues. See, because if you're on the bottom of the list, you're probably, the venue is probably not the one that they're asking for that help from. Right. So if your hair and makeup, which unfortunately it should be more important, but brides and grooms tend to, brides definitely tend to book that last, like all the way at the end. It's so frustrating. And because a lot of the great people aren't available, but the, if your hair and makeup, you know, maybe you go after referrals a little bit further down the line from the photographer, from, you know, the DJ from the florist might be the better fit for you to go after rather than the venue. Um, build a strong network and support other wedding professionals in your area. So make sure your network just doesn't include the venue. Make sure it includes DJs and photographers and florists and cake people and rental companies and um, there's so many different categories of vendors all the way down to the limo company. But remember that vendors can be just as great cheerleaders in your corner um, as well. Also remember to keep your network open. It's great to have the same chunk of people that you like to work with over and over again, but be open to new people. Some of the best vendors that I've ever met 
and continue to still refer um, friends who are getting married and other vendors to are those who, I mean, I took a chance on, you know, when a no name florist who just started your business calls me and says, Hey, 10 people told me I should meet with you. Do you have time for me? And it turned into a three hour coffee day. And, you know, we built one heck of a strategic partnership. Um, that's still affected today. So um, just make sure that you know that those people, new vendors in the industry, they deserve a shot too, right? Like, you know, we were all the newbie at some point or another. So remembering to open the door to vendors in every category, not just going after the venue. The venue is probably the hardest to go after because so many people are chasing them for the referral. So it might be easier for you to open the door and figure out how to do that with other vendors. So in just a minute, I'm going to open up for questions in the chat. So if there's anything extra that you want to know or that I didn't cover or ideas or tips specific to your category, pop into the chat. If you're on your phone, you would click um, the participant and it'll show you the chat. Um, you click on participants and then the chat is right there. If you're on your computer, obviously you just click on the more button on the bottom right and it'll pop open the chat box. Um, so next up is the newsletter. So we're getting our newsletter going for Wedding Venue Map, which is very exciting. Um, it'll include upcoming webinars, the website launch, which is coming this spring. It's very exciting. Collaboration opportunities. I'm constantly looking for sponsored information for blogs, different advertising options, and much more. So pick up your little phone, take a quick shot of this, go to that link, sign up for the newsletter. Um, I'll also follow up this webinar with a really quick Google form um, that really is just a survey of what you thought of the webinar, the time, the content, all of that good stuff. So I want to make sure that you're getting what you were hoping to get out of it today. And um, please take the time when I send that over to fill it out. That'd be great. Um, it's fun to do these and be able to share some tips and tricks for you. And, um, I really hope you join us on our next webinar. It's going to be the last Monday in March and, um, it's shut up and listen, <laughs> sell more by saying less. Um, I appreciate you taking your time today. If nobody has any questions that they pop in the chat, then this is kind of the end of it. Um, we've got, I've got opportunities. If you're looking for help to grow your business that I am more than happy to come in and work with you individually on emails. If you're a venue on how to increase your closing ratio on venue tours, um, what your wedding show booth looks like, whatever you're looking for to kind of have an outsider take a really fair and honest look at your business and tell you what you could do better. Um, and if there's anything else that I should have covered today, um, make sure you let me know in the feedback. So, ooh, I did it in 49 minutes. So just wanted to make sure everybody got all the information they needed. I don't see anything in the chat back. So thank you again for your time. If you didn't get a chance to take a picture of the newsletter sign up, I will follow up with an email. The email will have this um, webinar, the video for you to be able to have and listen to and re-listen to and take more notes if you want to. And yes, I'll be emailing the slide out. It'll go including um, in the webinar. It'll still be on there. And so it'll include the webinar link and where to take the survey. So I'm pop my video back on. Thank you guys so much for your time. I know you didn't need to see me the whole time. So um, I hopefully you got some great information out of it. And um, I look forward to you coming to next month to oh, shut up and listen nicely. Okay, but not really. You just need to stop talking and really listen to your clients. So come and learn more and um, I'll be back at this again this afternoon. Thanks so much and have a great day and go out there and find which venues are going to make sense for you and let me know how it works, if the tips work at all or um, if you had some success. Have a great day and here's to the next month.